Maya has broken up with her cheating boyfriend and lost their baby. Now has a new job and hopes for a new start. She gets drunk on party and wakes up with a total stranger. Will it be a drunken mistake or not? Where am I? A question with which Maya woke up this morning. A strange environment with the pounding of head was just not the way she ever got up. Let alone not remembering the night before. Don't panic, she said to herself, easily said than done but she knew panicking would get her nowhere. Slowly, she tried to recall the events of last night. I was at July's party. She introduced me to many of her friends, mostly males I might add. Arg, my head hurts. What happened? She mused out loud. Talking to yourself won't help you either. A strange voice coming from the bedroom door said. It scared her, both the unexpected voice, and the unknown house. Who is this guy? She tried to remember. His full profile came to her sight, him wearing nothing except boxers. He casually strode to a door. There is coffee in the kitchen, if you want some. I'll be in the bathroom. He said in a light tone. She stopped talking, but her mind was in frenzy. She listened to the sound of shower. Her mind was working as fast as her hangover-filled mind could think. She tried to process the scene with the man in boxers, in the same time tried to remember what had happened the previous night. First, she thought she should get out of this house, the stranger's house, before he gets out of the shower. Making this resolve, she got up from the bed but found herself naked. All the possibilities running in her mind, yet she didn't stop, she started looking for her clothes. She found none in the room. She started tracing her way out of the room to the corridor, there she found her panties and a little bit forward her bra. She wore it without second thought. Moving further, she found rest of her clothing and by the door of the living room she found her shoes. All she couldn't find was her purse. She was about to continue her search for her purse when she heard the bathroom door open and the boxer man asking if she wanted a shower. She gave up her search and hurried outside. All she could think was what had she done. She didn't know where she was, in which part of the city she was. Hurriedly, she called up a cab and gave him her address. Her thoughts were jumbled. She didn't know how she had gotten herself in such a situation. She hoped her neighbor, Christy, would be home to give her the spare key of her apartment and also pay for the cab. She remembered her purse but she consoled herself thinking as the purse contained not much of cash and just her apartment keys. Now, all she needed to do was change her locks. She continued musing all through the way. In about 20 minutes, she reached her home. She got off the cab and rang Christie's bell, praying silently that she was home. After three rings, a sleepy voice answered in a rather grumpy voice, who is it? It is Sunday morning, go away. Christy, it's Maya, could you please come down with some money please? Is there a problem, Maya? What are you doing out so early? Christy, I'll answer all your questions. But please come down right now, I need money to pay the cab. I'll return it. What's wrong? I'm coming, I'm coming. Five minutes later, they were sitting at Maya's living room. Thank you so much Christy for letting me in. So what happened? Where did you this early morning? Wait, isn't this the dress you wore for July's party? You weren't home the entire night. Where the hell were you? Where did you lose your keys? Were you mugged? Christy spoke all in a single breath and Maya could do nothing but stare at her best friend, smiling slightly. Maya raised her hand, stopping Christy on her monologue. Sorry Maya, I got carried away. Now, just tell me what happened. Well, I don't know. Still I am glad you went out last night. It's already been four months that you broke up with JD. All your weekends have been spent working and yes, I know it has been your way of dealing with the pain. But, sweetheart you have taken it to extremes. You need to have some fun and just a little bit of mistakes and accidents, that's all you need. Christy, you know, after I broke up with JD, I had to leave work. I couldn't see him with his slut of secretary. After that I had to establish myself in my new workplace, so I had to work hard. My interview was also done in a hurry, by phone. His previous assistant quitted after she figured out she was pregnant. She went to China with her boyfriend. I don't think she should have left her job in such a hurry. What if her boyfriend leaves her, she'll be jobless and have to support a baby. My boss had to leave the day I started my work two months ago for Europe. I haven't even met him. I have do most of his works too, you know. 
All the replacement work and everything I just didn't have time. Christy saw right through her lie and also her pain. She said, not every guy cheats on his girlfriend when she's pregnant. JD was and is an ass for doing so. I know that you have been busy. But, you know it very well you are hiding from people. No I'm not hiding from people. I go out on lunch dates. With your female co-workers. Admit it you are hiding from men. I do not. I went out to July's party last night. Yes, after a long time. So, what happened last night? Where did you stay all night long? Well, honestly I don't know. I don't remember much from last night, but this um morning um I woke up on a strange man's bed naked. You did what? I have no idea what happened between us. I have never been like this. I was always the responsible person. God, I don't know what happened. All of her frustration and confusion were coming out. She couldn't stop trying to remember what had actually happened last night, but to no avail. Well, I'm glad that you went out last night. Exclaimed Christy, all of a sudden. Maya choked up and was roused from all her musing. What? She exclaimed. What did you just say? I am telling you I may have slept with a complete stranger of which I have no knowledge and all you can say is, you are glad I went out last night. What kind of best friend are you? I am the world's best friend and you know it. Now, tell me was he hot? Christy can you not see the seriousness of this situation? Maya relax. Whatever that has to happen has already happened. Panicking will get you nowhere. Maya considered Christy's words. It was true. Panicking was not a solution. All she could do was wait for the consequences of her drunken mistake. I have never been in this kind of situation before. Maya said. You normally don't work yourself to death either. But that's what you have been doing for the past two months. I mean, after your breakup and miscarriage, you never really got the time to heal. Christy explained. Hey, I stayed in the hospital for an entire month. Yes, then you returned to your office where you worked yourself to exhaustion only to quit a month later. I told you I had to quit. I couldn't stay and work in the same office with my ex and his new girlfriend, especially since she liked flaunting it in my face every chance she got. And in order to leave I had to work not to leave any loose ends there. Well, yes if it was me, I would leave everything as it was and let him deal with the mess. I am a professional Christy, even if he is not. Okay okay enough about the scum of the earth. Tell me about last night and the guy whose bed you woke up in. Not much to tell. I woke up, panicked because I had no idea where I was, how I got there or who he was. He appeared in the room going to the bathroom and made some comment about coffee. As some details are a little fussy because I had just woken up with the mother of headaches. Remind me not to drink again by the way. So when he entered the bathroom I found my clothes and got out of there as fast as I could. He let you leave like that without any comments? Did you not hear me? I didn't give him the chance to say anything more. I ran from the apartment while he was taking a shower. As a matter of fact because I heard him finishing his shower I got out before I had the chance to find my purse. That's why you had to open my door. Sue, was he cute? Christy, that's the first thing you can ask me? I am telling you I slept with a total stranger. He could be someone dangerous. He could have slipped in my drink some kind of drug and all you can think is whether he was cute. I don't believe you. Don't be so shocked. You did not meet him at some bar apparently, since you were at your co-worker's party. So unless it was a huge gathering of hundreds of people, it was a friend of July's. Maybe you should give her a call and she will be able to fill the blanks of what really happened to you last night. You are right. I'll call her and then freak out. But it is too early, especially after a party. I'll go take a shower, drink some coffee and then call her. What was the guy's comment about coffee? Hum? You said the guy made a comment about coffee, what was it? Oh I think he said there was coffee in the kitchen if I wanted some. At least he was being nice. Yeah, sure very nice. First he gets me drunk, then he sleeps with me and he is nice because he offered me coffee. Hey, we don't know if that is how it happened. Wait for the details and then judge. And why are you so sure you slept together? Maybe he let you sleep in his bed to sober up. I woke up naked, my clothes were all over his apartment, and I feel sore in places I shouldn't. So yes I can say for sure sex was involved in last night's activities. Um, I wonder if he was good. Christy, you are incorrigible. I am going to take a shower. 
Thanks you for opening to me, you can go home now. No way, you woke me up. I want details. Take your shower, I will make some coffee for both of us. Then we can call dear old July and have some news about last night's party. Whatever, it is not like you will do anything I tell you. Got that right, bestie.